This one is Chimoko. Chimoko stands for someone who doesn't give up easily. Someone who is resilient. I call myself a go getter. <laughs> so, like I was saying earlier on, that uh, system has coined up things in such a way that when people retire, that's when they go to the farm. Yeah, I wish it can be revisited so that our attitudes will coin things in such a way that farming is for any age. If anything, people should go in when they are young. Yes. People should go in when they are young because there's so much potential. It ends up in, you know, growing our own food. When you grow your own food, when people have food, they have energy to work beyond their abilities. So, I always had the backyard garden where I would grow a number of little vegetables. I, you know, cannot be buying everything. So there was the, the very first time that I grew indeterminate tomato variety. I didn't even know that there was such a way as indeterminate. I had bought some tomatoes from a friend who was a farmer. The contact was through another friend. You know, there's that period when tomato is so hard to come by. So they dropped the box of tomato. I was not home. When I got home, I found this tomato, raw, green. I'm like, but I want red tomato to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I got back to the person who brought the tomato. I said, but why have you brought me raw tomatoes? She says, no, no, no. They'll be ready. Just give them a bit of time. And indeed, when they were ripe, everything was so red and so nice and crisp. I was like, oh. I could add some tomatoes to my existing backyard. Mm -hmm. So I asked her the variety, the seed rather. So now I get seedlings from uh, Amiran. And the following day, I was on my way to Amiran to get uh, 110 seedlings actually, just 10 plants for my backyard. I get there on the counter. This one on my left has come to collect 5,000. The other one has come to collect 10,000. How do I talk about 10? I felt intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up raising it to 50. And they gave me the 50. And I went and planted. Boy, I had tomato. Just with manure. Because there, there's no other information that I got from there. Just a, And I, cause I, I used to put a lot of manure in my vegetables. I just used manure. And I used manure for the same tomato as well. The tomato grew. The tomato had clusters in a bala. Oh, it was quite exciting. When it came to now harvesting, it was so much. I shared with some neighbors. It was still a lot. Mm -hmm. I ended up even uh, supplying uh, a lodge in uh, Jesmondings because we were staying in hands with them. Mm -hmm. I supply, we were supplying that lodge two boxes per week. So just from that, I was like, no. If this was to be replicated on a bigger piece of land, I think uh, we could be on to something. Mm -hmm. That's when the search for land started. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, work over time is what has brought us to where we are now. The farm started running like, uh, I think, 2008. We're going to we're running it remotely, rather, because we're still staying in town. We had uh, work going on at the farm because we had the layers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some in cages, some deep litter. But uh, people were not faithful. There was a crop that uh, uh, didn't, uh, not a crop, a batch of beds that didn't reach maturity properly who we'll go to learn afterwards that the vaccines were not given on time mm -hmm. yes so that pushed us now to move to the farm when we we're not ready yeah. 
because we have invested. And then, because I remember that batch was supposed to be giving us uh, 300 trays of eggs per day. The chickens didn't mature. Most of the vaccines, I'm told, were finding ways out of the farm. Because it, it was good that we came. It pushed us to be involved in whatever we're doing, rather than being told that this is what, this is what. We're forced to learn proper production. We even did a good proper production of broilers for hybrid and uh, Zambia at different stages because our uh, capacity was 16,000. So we used to manage production for them for quite some time until, like I said, the prevalence of thieving was so much, then we gave it a break. As for the production in the field, uh, you get inspired when you see how others are doing it. And uh, you want to do it too. What is limiting you? Oh, the know-how. That's the know-how I talked about in the field that uh, I took interest upon myself to, to learn. Learn and learn it well. There were farmers, there are farmers who are actually ready to share information. I happened to have come across such farmers. And then uh, ended up building a relationship with a, one of the companies like Syngenta, who I always say have, a, have footsteps on this farm that uh, cannot be erased because uh, they have seen us to where we are. When you have challenges in production in the field, you know how important scouting is. Some few things will pass you by. Ah, now what can this be? Syngenta, uh, just a phone call away. Mm -hmm. They are technical staff mm -hmm. or they are marvelous. Yeah, they have been a phone call away. Yes. So all the time you are learning new things so that next time that one comes up, you know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. You only call them for new things. So along the way, our production improved so much so that, like I was saying, when I have tomato in this hectare, I, we harvest four to five hundred boxes per week, which is quite good production. So there was a time in 2017, yeah, that was 2017, when I got a call from... Um, that was uh, even a gover who called. He called to interview me. My name had come up with the other farmers. USA had the project. And uh, they were looking for farmers to do that project with. And uh, my name had come up with other names. So that time actually I was out of town. But I swiftly made my way back. After three days, the uh, interview took place. I had uh, quite a good crop of tomato here. This first block here, it was almost getting ready. Like in a week's time or two, we we'll start harvesting because signs were already there. But you are looking at a, a, a tomato crop that is talking to you. Clusters. The foliage <coughs> it was like almost getting to two meters mm -hmm. high. So the person who had come for the talk to us was like he wanted to see the person. Yeah, my supervisor, the one who was managing the, this field. Uh, then my husband says, no, she's the one who's managing the field. He says, oh yeah, I know it's a field. But he's the one directly managing this crop to look like this. He says she's the one. Uh, I was a bit shy to speak out then. It's you. I said, yes, it's me. He whispered and says, you know what? I have a degree in agriculture, but I can't do this production. 
<laughs> we all laughed and we chaffed around. But uh, the tomato was speaking for itself. Yes. And uh, all that out of uh, the quest to want to learn, mm -hmm. to want to do it and do it well. In uh, 2016-2017, Zambian, uh, that magazine by Zambian Farmers Union, mm -hmm. the Farmers Zedin. Magazine, Zedin, yeah, the magazine for August of I think 2016 mm -hmm. has an article about me. Mm -hmm. Someone just picked me. Uh, my pictures, my name, I don't know where. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were harvesting our stacks of tomatoes there. They are doing this. So, yeah. <laughs> so those were some of the steps beginning to for our growth. So yeah. in that interview, there were other farmers that had been interviewed. I think we were like two or three in Osaka West that mm -hmm. they wanted to do the project with. I emerged. That's how I received the first greenhouse. It was 8 by 15. Yes, it was erected. There were, I think, 20 erected across the country. Mm. And USAID even paid, uh, they organized the, the training, paid for it. All 20 of us attended that training in Chaminoka. It was uh, intensive, where we learned quite a lot adding on to what we had already been picking along the way. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that was the birth of the seedlings uh, production. Eight by 15. Then we came to eight by 30. And now we are standing at eight by 30 by five. No, two are, three are eight by 30. And then two are nine by 30. This growth, has been a lot due to feedback from the farmers that buy seedlings from us. I remember one time, Mr. What is the name, that man? He was near Christian Voice. He had bought, a, it was his first time to get seedlings from us. He got a Newton. He had asked for a bit extra on the day that he was collecting the Newton. Then a month later, he asked me to pass by and check his production. And I did. All the crop was looking good and nice. But then he says, you know what, madam? It's the first time that I've bought seedlings and I've not lost a single one. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to say. But uh, then he says, you remember I'd asked for extras. Those extras I asked for were for gapping because it's a normal thing mm -hmm. to always gap and even all the ones i got for gapping they are all here I, I i didn't know what to say i was humbled that really this is this is the production that we are doing that encouraged us to continue working even harder and uh, to even surpass our own highest level of production in terms of quality. Uh, achievements in 2019, we were uh, just here again because I also grow papaya seedlings, those dwarf papayas. There are some. We've been eating for quite some time now, actually, in Ampepe, Chitika. Up and now, again, they'll start again. So somebody had come looking for those seedlings. Uh, numbers had been shared. Those people have bought before, they've shown the production, and they share. So he came looking for that. And uh, he found quite some good production. That day he came, they even found us a... Uh, um, transplanting some cabbage seedlings. So he was like, what's that powder that you are putting? The same organic fertilizer. So I said, no, this is organic fertilizer that we are putting in our planting hose. Oh, is that so? Uh, we talked, talked. Then when he came here, 
He introduced himself fully. I had no idea. He was heading National Agriculture Information Services. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he was uh, very much taken with the organic fertilizer. He says, I would love you to uh, showcase this. To, he went to a point where they have even actually gave us a space at the agriculture. Mm -hmm. Sure. That was 2019, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where we made, the, we got a fed price. We didn't even expect it. Because we were planting a month later than all the other live demos had been planted. We are, I think I've imaged twice as best crop farmer of the year. The other presentation, actually, I missed it. I think, what had happened? I think it was not well. Somebody just calls me, we had your name at Mungush. Where? Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But uh, for me, the biggest achievement, I say, is when I have returned customers coming, when we have grown, we are harvesting, and we are churning out food to the market. Even uh, I got a call last year from AgriCoop that my name had been nominated. Uh, that's good and quite humbling that your name can be picked out. It means they are seeing what you are doing. They are seeing the impact you are having in the farming sector. Yeah. Any challenges? Uh, challenges are there, yes. Challenges are there. Challenges are there. When you can't put a name to your crop, that's what uh, these marketeers will say when they come to buy. Imagine if you are not here at Tuesday, you said, this is a tezi na mwana wan. Now you're talking about prices. You are not in control of the pricing structure of the things that you grow. Yeah. That's, that's quite a challenge. <laughs> that's quite a challenge. And uh, where um, um, this same sector, yes. Prices, right? the markets you go to, so I do. You go with your produce, Apunda. They don't even know what goes in there for you to get. It. <laughs> apart from Soweto, other markets. No, mm -hmm. other markets are better. Like uh, when I said we are the so suppliers of red cabbage at Freshmark. Mm -hmm. We have supplied our watermelons because we grow them big for supermarkets. When we supply watermelons, they are the market. The price is structured, okay. Because you are getting value for what you have produced. Yeah. But the biggest market is the open market. Because Freshmark can only take in so much. The biggest market is the auto market where you have completely no control. Apart from the pricing, society always wants the woman to be in the kitchen. And that this thing should be for men. So when you are a woman trying to say this and that, they don't take you serious. They want to push you this way and that way. You agree, my friend? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, I'm talking about this land. You've seen the fields. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't even produce to my ability. Because the land is not enough. I've applied before. I'm sure they were just so crispy. Huh? I remember another place. I don't know if this should even come out on camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember another place. Uh, yes, some machinery for hire. Which is hired. I went to hire. They gave me the procedures. I was ready. I paid. I did what? The day I was supposed to go and pick the missionary. No, it's going to you. The male name was mentioned. Oh, okay. Twice. The third time. Again. I refused. I was stubborn. You know how it ended that day? I came with the missionary to the farm. <laughs> they had just met one stubborn woman. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, do, do you have to go to those lengths? Huh? don't have to. 
yeah and it's the market the biggest market for that you. is the biggest market yes. for us so then quality of produce also plays a part okay. yes because if your produce is of that quality yeah yes if if your produce is of good quality you still manage to get the top range price when you sell on the farm also yeah it's not bad at least here we we'll negotiate and the market you really can't but uh, quality there if you have quality then your produce will sell without much hassle factory when you talk about the organic fertilizer when i talk to farmers i even tell them if you have access to manure use it yeah i'm that thing if you have access manure, use it. If you don't have, I'll sell it because I make it. And uh, yeah, we make organic fertilizer on the farm. It started with a dream of making, uh, using organic fertilizer for ourselves. But then when I saw the benefits that come with organic fertilizer, rebuilding the soils, water holding capacity, giving nutrients to the plants, as well as bringing down the cost of fertilizer. I thought of um, coming out and sharing it with other farmers. That's the point when we started increasing our production. We increased our production and uh, had the, um, the fertilizer properly tested at the Zambia Agricultural Research Institute in Chilanga so that uh, the farmer who is buying is actually seeing what they are going to put in their soils. And uh, luckily we have an outlet in town, Farmer's Barn being uh, our main outlet for farmers who are unable to access it here at the farm. We make the liquid one as well for vegetative growth. It's a quite a big game changer because there are some vegetables that are grown exclusively using the organic fertilizer. Our dream is at the end of the day to actually grow pure organic uh, vegetables. Because uh, apart from the attributes I spoke about, good water holding capacity, rebuilding the soils, feeding the plants, and lowering the cost of fertilizer. We are also growing healthy food without chemical residues, without any uh, foreign matter in them. To see this, farm. this farm has been growing and it's not stopping growing. We are still growing. I'm seeing the seedlings, the production side growing so that we reach as many farmers as we can because uh, even now from monday to today anyone who calls i have no siblings because uh, they've they've been picked so we are continuing our good quality production so that we reach as many farmers as we can Though, so, yeah, finance-wise, maybe there are some challenges that come because those things don't come cheap. <laughs> they don't come cheap. Uh, so that's one side of growth. The other side of growth, of course, is the, the organic fertilizer section. If we can uh, churn out our fertilizer to as many farmers, as we can that is a plus not only for us it's a plus for the farmers it's a plus for the country um the field production early in the year in february uh, we had the chance of being invited to go and attend a few day in south africa by one of our stakeholders stack airs we grow stack airs as well with them 
people were one of those that invited. They invited five farmers. Yes, we were one of the five. You know, exposure is also a very good thing. The little shed nets that are erected here and has shown the quality of production that comes out of there. I saw big shed nets that side covering hectares and everything grown under there was just so marvelous. I'd been talking like that. I'd seen, I did see some shed nets at one time. I had joined another agricultural tour to the Bendaro self sponsored. I went because of my quest for agriculture and wanting to improve. Mm -hmm. Yes. I saw most of their production is in shed nets. They hardly grow in the open. And the quality that comes with the shed netting. I came, I was telling my son, I was telling my husband, if I can have this field shed netted, ooh, <laughs> that dream still lives. <laughs> I don't know, somebody should just come and do it for me. Because <laughs> when I look at it, it's massive, I can't. But uh, yeah, yeah. Value addition, when I plant that small seed into that size of seedling, that's not value addition. <laughs> mm. More especially the garden uh, side, not maybe the seedling. Not the side. Yes. Uh, we sell them as well when we harvest because it's food ready to eat. There's no processing that we do. Okay. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Wrapping? Is wrapping very good? Mm. No, it's not. Packaging is not. Packaging is not. On the okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how it is. The cost uh, stress, yeah, that's why I talk about the shade netting. This crop you are seeing here, I'm sure you must have seen some gaps in this watermelon. Mm -hmm. Most of them died because of that extreme cold. Mm -hmm. If it was shed netted, I'm not going to experience loss. Like in the greenhouse, I have four. Mm -hmm. Then I have ladies who do the planting. Mm -hmm. Those are like, because they are paid and what they have done. Mm -hmm. That's casual. Mm -hmm. They are three. So I guess four, that's seven, this section. And then the organic fertilizer, they are four. Oh, when they are in full production, they always have to get some casuals. But okay, let's leave it at four. Okay. And then the field, I have four. And then I have uh, mm -hmm. the ladies who help in the ladies we found, mm -hmm. they come casual mm -hmm. to help in reading. You know, when women do something, they do it. So I'm counting how many, four there, four there, eight, four there, 12, permanent driver, 13, the other one, 14, and this one, 15. And then that's seven casuals. <coughs> 15 now on payroll, they are on Napsa, they are on Nima. Uh, maybe my son is the one who should have those numbers. Oh, even my son and his wife, they work. So 24, approximately. 24? Yes. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I even used to do beekeeping. Ish, me, I'm a curious person. I did it and I did it so well. Mm -hmm. Yes. You stopped? Uh, like when you're coming, Uku. The farms go this way. This way, it's traditional land. So, you know, you put up an apiary and then you hang them. I had about 49 or 50 beehives. So, we all got them? Yes. For shoka, what? And even eat. It's been a while now. We got back with Amber. The quality. Yeah. The quality. I didn't know myself that had such nice quality. Until 
People are test to it. Yes, I remember my daughter, her friend, they were together with her twins. Her father, he's even late now, he was already his commander. Just used to ex exclusively use uh, honey like that. So, my daughter, the daughter bought through my daughter. It was. So, this other time we didn't have. So, now my daughter says, Can you imagine what my friend's dad is saying? He's telling my friend that maybe you just didn't pay. <laughs> That's why you're not bringing that honey. You are stopped buying from anywhere else. After that time, I was just, okay, sometimes you think, okay, maybe people are supporting you and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. And we're taking it ourselves here. So, there's a time, I'm um, Seventh-day Adventist. Okay. I had a few friends at church, then we're still going back to invest church. Honest, I'm going to my hand. I mean, because we don't have it once. Mm -hmm. So, there was a time we had a funeral in uh, a Somebody was coughing or something near Melissa there. I thought, I'm going to go to Melissa. As well, buying other groceries, we bought the honey there. That's when I noticed. So people talk about, okay, because we also use it. It's always clear. No ways, you know what? Now the honey we bought. I said, no wonder people talk. <laughs> no wonder people talk. It's so much difference, but I've seen now Zambezi gold has food. Mm. What is the actual size of your farm? This is... Uh, is it 90 point something acres? But it's 8... I think 8.4 hectares. 8 hectares. I think so. But my field yeah. is like... 5 to 6 acres, I think. Kujakulvi Machitonia, the land is like this. Say one day I'll have mass and a boot, bring a bulldozer and plant it. <laughs> but I don't know because uh, there's just a natural way where water passes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same is now. Don't wait until all the energy is gone. No. You know when you're energetic, that's when you can do so many things. That's when discoveries are made. Yes. So if we have the youth in farming, you know what? we have an unsured future because it means we have continuous production. Youths are very open to new ideas, new innovations. Ah, I think we would not be talking about food, shortages of food and whatnot. No. We would have enough maize. Though I think you like talking about maize as food. <laughs> mm -hmm. We would actually have enough of a lot of things and still be able to export a lot. Mm -hmm. And still be able to export a lot.